بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد so we continue the discussion with regards to arkan and akhlaq al-hasana the pillars of noble manners the pillars of noble manners and that they are four we have seen this in our previous class and this is derived from the understanding of that which is mentioned from the beneficial from the beneficial speech of Ibn Abi Zaid al-Qayrawani rahimahullahu ta'ala known as uh, Malikun al-Saghir the small Imam Malik and he died in 386 rahimahullahu ta'ala and he mentioned that uh, all of the manners they re- the understanding of the noble manners they are all come from four narrations and the foundations of the and the foundations of the noble manners they're all f- found in four narrations and the first one we have seen in our previous class and that is with regards to that pillar of noble manners the first one siyana to lisan protecting the tongue and this is derived from the statement of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir falyaqul khayran aw yasmud that whoever believes in allah in the last day then he should say that which is good or else be silent that he should say that which is good or or be silent so this is that first pillar and it is derived from this particular narration and likewise there are three more pillars as well derived from those narrations that Ibn Abi Zayd he mentioned the first narration that which has preceded the second narration he mentioned من حسن إسلام المرئي تركه ما لا يعنيه and from the good Islam of an individual is that he leaves off that which does not concern him and likewise the narration of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم whenever he summarized the advice for that individual and he said لا تغضب do not become angry and the last narration with regards to the affairs of the heart المؤمن لا يؤمن وحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه then not one of you truly believes or has completed his faith that he loves what he, for his brother what he loves for himself. So the first affair is with regards to protecting and preserving the tongue. And the second affair is with regards to busying oneself and taking advantage of one's time in the affairs that are beneficial for him and leaving off the affairs that do not concern him and staying away from the haram and staying away from that which is impermissible and avoiding that which is not concerning one individual in his life and that which is not beneficial for him. And the third one is with regards to the, the individual's desires and his souls. And he has a shahwa and he has desires and whims. And he has to check them and he has to keep keep them under the reins uh, and, and, and in, inside the legislation and uh, under the regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he would not let his desires cause him to leave those noble manners become, by becoming angry and the like. And we will see that which is related to that bi'ithnillahi ta'ala and also the fourth affair is that the heart is pure and clean and the heart does not bear any rancor or hatred or enmity or have hardship towards any of the believers or animosity or jealousy or envy and the likes like this but rather the heart of a believer it wants good for his brother as he wants for himself and he dislikes for his brother that which he dislikes for for himself that which he dislikes for himself so we see that the second pillar the first pillar excuse me is siano to descend protecting the tongue and this has proceeded the second pillar and this is still coming from the benefits that Sheikh Abdul Razak has mentioned Hafizahullah Ta'ala and his new work that is recently re- released Akhlaqu or Ahadithu Al-Akhlaq Ahadithu Al-Akhlaq and in the introduction of this work he has the chapter Husn Khuluq when he summarized many beneficial affairs with regards to this and from them this affair and that statement of Ibn Abi Zayd Al-Qayrawani that is mentioned by Ibn Rajib Al-Hambari Rahimahullah Ta'ala so the second pillar is Min Arkan Al-Akhlaq Al-Bu'du An Al-Fuduri Wa Ma La Ya'ni 
قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من حسن إسلام المرء تركوه ما لا يعنيه So also from the pillars and the fundamentals of good manners and noble conduct is that one would stay away from uh, excessive speech and action and uh, delving into affairs that do not concern him. And uh, this is just as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has mentioned that uh, verily from the good Islam of an individual is that he leaves off that which does not concern him. So this uh, narration it has many benefits. From them is this establishment of the pillar of, of this particular uh, issue, the pillar of good and noble manners. But likewise, we see that also from Al-Islam, that not only is it performing those obligations, but likewise staying away from that which is not beneficial and staying away from that which is not uh, concerning an individual from the affairs that are, are, are not permissible and from the affairs that are, that are haram and from the affairs that... Uh, are not allowed in the lies like this, then also this is considered al Islam to leave off these things and to stay away from them. And likewise, we see from this narration, Barakallahu Fikum, something that is very important, and that is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, from the good Islam of a person is that he leaves off that which does not concern him. And the opposite is true. That means that the one who does not leave off what does what does not concern him, maybe he has Islam, but it's not good. Islam is not good. There's deficiency therein. So the Islam of an individual can be good, meaning he can comply to the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal and follow Al Islam properly, or he can still be a Muslim, but he has deficiency in faith and his Islam is not well. It's not good. Rather, he is weak and deficient. Naudhu billahi min al khidlan. So Sheikh Abdul Razak he says, "Well, insan al fadouri." لن يكون ذا أدب وخلق لأن فضوله وإقحامه لنفسه فيما لا يعنيه يخرجه أن حيز الأدب بخلاف من كان بعيدا عن الفضول بعيدا عن الدخول فيما لا يعنيه فهذا من سمات الأدب بل من أعميداته So the individual, يعني he says al insan al fadouli the individual al fadouli is somebody who they is always curious and nosy and meddlesome and sticking his uh, his nose in other people's business and looking here and looking there and very curious and looking at this one. What, what is this person saying and that person saying? Uh, what does this say on what is this website and that? With, with no control, with no reins, looking here and looking there, saying this and saying that, speaking to this one and speaking to that one, reading here and looking there. Like this without any restriction or without any um, goal or without any uh, aim and the likes like this, just loose and open. This is, he says this type of person, he, he, he will never be a person of good manners. Because his uh, curiosity and his uh, wasting of time and the likes like this and always putting himself in businesses and in places that do not concern him or always and he throwing himself into affairs that do not concern him, this takes him out of the aspect of being uh, from those who have manners. And this is contrary to the one who is far away from this type of uh, behavior. The one who is who is nosy and meddlesome and always prying, and the one who is, uh, like they say, a busybody here and there, and the lights like this. He's, uh, and he's far away from any entering into affairs that do not concern him, then this is from the attributes of good manners. Rather, this is from the pillars of good manners. So one thing that we also must understand is that which the Shaykh he mentions next. He says, وَمَعْنَ قَوْلِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ تَرَكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ تَرَكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ And the meaning of the, sta- uh, of the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم leaving off that which does not concern him this means he says أي بضابط الشرعي لا بضابط الهوى This is according, according to the restriction or to the, to the condition of the legislation not according to the desires. وَهَذَا أَمْرٌ قَدْ يُغْفَلُ عَنْهُ And this is something that may, many people may be heedless of. لِأَنَّ بَعْضَ النَّاسِ قَدْ يُوَظِّفُ هَذَا الْحَدِيثَ فِي غَيْرِ بَابِهِ Because some people, they may try to apply this narration in the wrong understanding or in the wrong aspect. مِثْرُ أَنْ يُؤْمَرَ بِخَيْرٍ أَوْ يُنْهَى عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ فَيَقُولُ لِلْآمِرِ أَنَّاهِ مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ For example, you will find some people who misunderstand this affair. And uh, they will be commanded to do some good. Or they will be prohibited from doing some evil. 
and they'll tell that person who is commanding them with the good or prohibiting with the evil from the good Islam of a person is that he busies himself with that which concerns him. Meaning, don't don't worry about me, worry about yourself. That's what he's trying to say. So this person, in reality, has he has truly misunderstood. Sheikh Abdul Razak, he says, This is a bad understanding of this narration. Because this, in reality, is something that concerns a Muslim. And to command the people with the good and to prohibit them from evil, especially if they're from their family and from their relatives and those who are near to them, especially. Yani, especially. He says, so, it, it, because the affair of commanding the good and prohibiting the evil, this is something that concerns. This is something that concerns a Muslim. This is something that concerns a Muslim. Now that he's concerned with this, whether the goodness of a Muslim is in, lies in here, the fact that he commands the good, So he says that this is according to the restriction or the condition and uh, the requirements of the legislation. And that will be in with good manners and, and in a good way and with gentle speech. And he, whenever he commands the good and prohibits the evil. But the point is, if somebody is commanded to do the good and to, to do the evil, they shouldn't misunderstand this issue and be like, oh, don't worry about me, you worry about yourself. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said that from the good Islam is a person that he, uh, that he does not delve into affairs or that he leaves off that which does not concern him. So he misunderstood this issue. But rather, uh, if, a, if a believer sees somebody upon misguidance or doing something that, that is haram or doing something that is impermissible whether he will command the good and sometimes in order to command that good one may must inform somebody else who has authority over them so this is a good deed and this is praiseworthy and this is the way of a believer so we should not misunderstand this affair and likewise uh, the one who sees somebody falling short and performing an obligation then he will command them to do that and, and he will enjoin that good upon them and in the good manner likewise that we have seen previously and sometimes uh, a person may see that uh, person, another individual falling short in the obligations and he's not able to change it himself, so he will inform somebody who has authority over him. So there are some people who have misunderstood this affair like the Sheikh is mentioning. And even worse than that, there are some who have blamed those who command the good and they, and they, and they, and they prohibit the evil. And they have used foul words following the disbelievers and they have been deceived themselves and they say, why are you snitching on me? Oh, you're a snitch. You're a, you're a tattletale like this. And some of the youth have been affected by that. And this is foul and this is a bad way. Rather, Allah Azza wa he has praised those people who command the good and he has praised those people who prohibit the evil. And rather, he has mentioned that the ummah, this is from their traits and characteristics. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best ummah brought out for all mankind. Yani the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. Because you command the good and you prohibit the evil and you believe in Allah. And you believe in Allah. So we should not be mis uh, uh, we should not have a misunderstanding and we should not be deceived. Rather, we should learn the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his biography and his seerah and his sunnah. And learn the correct deen and the proper al-Islam and then it will be clear for us who, 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 who is blameworthy and who is not blameworthy. Who is blameworthy and who is not blameworthy. So the people who tell on others whenever they do wrong, this person is praiseworthy and he's not blameworthy. Rather the one who tries to blame him and call him a snitch or tattletale or the likes like this, then this person, and he's the one who's blameworthy and he's the one who needs to check himself. He's blameworthy for falling into that negligence of falling into the prohibition or doing something that's not permissible or falling short in the commandment, then even worse than that, thinking that he has the right to do that and others do not have the right to inform them and blaming them. So this is something the youth, they should wake up with regards to. They should wake up with regards to this. And they should stop using these words, snitch, and, and finding fault with the people who inform whenever they see somebody doing something bad. Rather, this is, pra this is praiseworthy and this is good. This is praiseworthy and this is good. So the issue here is that, that this is from Al-Islam. And this is from the good manners. And this is from the pillars of the noble conduct. That a person, he doesn't just waste his time and he doesn't just look here and look there and doesn't just go to the Google and type in things and start looking and reading everything that's on the internet or any book. He just opens it and he reads it. Rather, he has purpose in his life. He has a goal that he's trying to achieve and that's the pleasure of Allah and reaching the paradise safely. And reaching the paradise safely and that he will try to take care of his deen and not jeopardize his religion or put his soul in danger and, and the likes like this. So then he's concerned about his time 
and he's concerned about his speech. As we have perceived, that's a pillar. And he's concerned about his deen, and he's concerned about his affair, and there are many things that he's concerned about from the affairs of this life and the hereafter that preoccupies him to waste his time. And the lies like this. So a believer will never have time to kill. And a believer will never become bored. And he, because their iman is strong, so they, they have purpose in life. And they move uh, trying to achieve goals. And the main goal is to live and to die as a Muslim. As a Muslim. And to enter paradise. And to, and, and to have the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla and His mercy. That's the main goal. And then the rest of his goals are going to be in accordance. So he's not wasting his time looking here and looking there. And, and, and the lies like this. This is from the affairs that do not concern a Muslim. But the affairs that concern a Muslim is that is the pleasure of Allah and that which leads to it. So the third pillar that is mentioned here with regards to al-akhlaq al-hasana, al-ruqn uh, al min arkan al-akhlaq, Sheikh Abdul Razak, he mentioned, Hafidhullah, adab al-insiyaqi ma'a infi'alat al-nafs, khasatan al ghalab that a person, he will not fall behind the... The desires of his soul and the movement of his soul, whenever his soul, the emotions of his soul, sometimes the, the, the soul and the person's he had desires and emotions, they may be riled up. And sometimes from them any anger and the lies like this, especially he says anger, and this is what is being spoken about here. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taghdab, don't become angry. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he advised that man who said, advise me. Advise me, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, don't get angry. He said again, advise me something else. He said, don't get angry. He said again, advise me something else. He said, don't get angry. The same advice over and over and over three times. Shaykh Abdul Razak, he says, فَعِنْدَمَا يَنْفَعِلُ الْإِنسَانُ وَيَغْضَبُ عَلَيْهِ أَلَّا يُبَاشِرَ وَقْتَ غَضَبِهِ Naam? That whenever a person, he becomes, فَعِنْدَمَا يَنْفَعِلُ الْإِنسَانُ وَيَغْضَبُ عَلَيْهِ أَلَّا يُبَاشِرَ وَقْتَ غَضَبِهِ أَيَّا قَوْلٍ أَوْ أَيِّ فِيلٍ Naam? He says, and this is, this is a golden benefit, like they say, and this is يعني, نسيحة the habiyah, very beneficial. That and a person, whenever he becomes angry, he should, at the time, whenever he's angry, he should not perform any action or any statement. If anger comes into the heart of, a, of an individual, what should he do? The shaykh is saying he should not do anything. He should not do anything until the anger is gone. He doesn't speak. He doesn't move. He doesn't commit an action. He says, لَأَنَّ أَيِّ قَوْلٍ وَأَيِّ فِعْلًا يُبَاشِرُهُ وَقْتَ غَضَبِهِ سَيَخْرُجُ بِهِ فِي الْغَارِبِ النِّطَاقِ الْخُلُقِ وَالْأَدَبِ He said because any statement or any action that one performs while they are angry, the majority of the time that action and statement will, come, will, will exceed the realms and the range of good and noble manners and conduct. And if the person, whenever he becomes angry, from one of the first things that he does whenever he's angry, he breaks the first pillar. Huh? He does not preserve his tongue and he says something that's not good or correct. He, does, he says something that is not befitting or allowed. And therefore, and he, because of falling behind this emotion and letting the soul be, be a, a slave to that emotion, then it causes him to act and move in that way. So then one of the first things that happens whenever a person comes angry, if he does not control his soul and his desires, then he, he will speak. So then and he, the anger is one of the means to destroy the, the manners from many aspects. The one who does not uh, follow this advice, la taghdab, and he, do not become angry. And, he, and then if somebody does become angry, there's also advice too. He should not say anything. Because if he does that, then he's going to say something many, many times, or the majority of the time that he's going to regret. That he's going to regret. And if he acts likewise while angry, then many times that one will act in a manner whenever he's angry that he regrets that whenever he's not angry anymore. Naam? So the Shaykh said, وَقَدْ قِيلَ فِي ذَمِّ الْغَضَبِ وَالتَّقْبِيحِهِ الْغَضَبُ أَوَّلُهُ جُنُونٌ وَأَخِيرُهُ نَدَمٌ and it's been mentioned about uh, anger and in a manner of blaming anger and finding uh, how despicable it, is, despicable it is that anger in the beginning is craziness. A person loses his mind and the end of it is regret. So in the beginning a person becomes angry, what happens? They lose his mind. Sometimes people, they become so angry, they lose their minds and they go crazy and they say things and they don't even remem remember later. Yeah, then Billah. And then whenever they come, uh, uh, the, the, the anger goes away, they, they have regret and remorse. 
He says, لِأَنَّ الَّذِي يَتَصَرَّفُ وَقْتَ غَضَبِهِ بِقَوْرٍ أَوْ فِيلٍ يَتَصَرَّفُ بِغَيْرِ إِنْضِبَاطٍ Because the person who acts and, and he moves and he behaves the way that one behaves at the time of anger and he has statements or actions, then he normally he behaves without any conditions or any restrictions or regulations. He just following the, 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 the soul and whatever it desires and wants. وَلِهَذَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَلَّا يَنْسَاقَ مَا انْفِعَالَاتِ النَّفْسِ فَإِذَا كَانَ مُنْفَعِلًا فَلْيَجْلِسِ And he said because of this, a person he should not fall behind and he should not follow his, his soul and his desires at the time of anger. And the one who experiences some anger, then he should sit down. And if he's standing... قال عليه الصلاة والسلام the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said إذا غضب أحدكم وهو قائم فليجلس فإن ذهب عنه الغضب وإلا فليضجع he mentioned the narration of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that is authenticated by Shaykh al-Bani رحمه الله that if one of you becomes angry while he's standing then he should sit down and if the anger goes away then that's good and if not then he should lie down then he should lie down so then th this is the case, and he should, and this is clear evidence, he should not do anything. And if he becomes angry while he's standing, he shouldn't start running or moving or, or heading towards the person or the affair that he's angry with. Rather, the Prophet said, he should sit down. Sit down in order for him not to perform any action. Now for, so that he does not perform an action that he will regret later. And likewise, even if he sits down and he's still angry, then he should, then he should lie down. And he, uh, just to emphasize the importance of not acting upon the anger and of not letting the, the soul fall behind the anger and comply to the whims and the desires of the soul at the time of anger. At the time of anger. Now, and the Shaykh, he says, And likewise, he should also not only lay down, sit down or lay down, also he should prohibit himself from speaking. قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ والسلام, The Prophet وسلم, he said, And if one of you becomes angry, then he should be quiet. If one of you becomes angry, then he should be silent. He should not speak. This is the advice of the Messenger وسلم. The Shaykh, he says, فَقَوْلُهُ فَلْيَسْكُتْ اِمْتِنَعٌ عَنِ الْكَلَامِ وَقْتِ الْغَضَبِ وَقَوْلُهُ فَلْيَجْلِسْ اِمْتِنَعٌ عَنِ الْفِعْرِ وَقْتَ الْغَضَبِ so in the statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَلْيَسْكُدْ Then let him be quiet. Let him be silent. Huh? This is that meaning that the person, he should uh, prohibit himself and he should refrain from speaking while he's angry. And in the statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَلْيَجْلِسْ Then let him sit down. This is also an indication that while one is angry, he should prohibit himself and refrain from acting. Any performing deeds. He shouldn't do anything. If he, he should sit down, if it goes away, alhamdulillah. If the anger remains, he should lay down. To emphasize the fact of not acting upon the anger. Not performing actions uh, while being angry. And likewise, فَلْيَسْكُتْ Let him be quiet, be silent, don't say nothing. Now at the time of anger. Because this is a means for a person to fall into many affairs that one regrets. And he says, he says here, فَهَذَانِ الْأَمْرَانِ الْكَلَامُ وَالْفِعْلُ وَقْتَ الْغَضَبِ مَطْلُوبٌ مِّنَ الْمُسْلِمِ أَنْ يَكُفَّ نَفْسَهُ عَنْهُمَا إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَسْكُنَ غَضَبُهُ That these two affairs, speaking and actions, uh, speaking and acting, upon, and, and, and acting and performing actions at the time of anger, what is required for a Muslim at this time is that he will prohibit himself huh, from these two affairs, that he will refrain from and prohibit himself from speaking or acting until the anger is it goes away, until the anger goes away, and he calms down. لِأَنَّهُ وَقْتَ إنْفِعَالِهِ قَدْ يُبَاشِرُ أَقْوَالٍ وَعَمَالٍ تَتَنَافَ مَا الْأَدَبِ وَالْخُلُقِ Because while his soul is affected by the anger and and is and the lights like this, he could possibly perform actions or statements that are contrary to good and noble manners. And it could to good and noble manners. And this is something, subhanAllah, how many people, it is clear, they have divorced. A man has divorced his family because of anger. Or, or the likes like this, or the woman, she will, she will seek a khula without right because of anger and, she, and acting at the time of anger and speaking at the time of anger. And then, and then oh, this will happen in the morning time. 
uh, for example, and then by the evening time, by Asr, they're, they're, they're trying to fix it. That what, what are we going to do now? Uh, what, what, I, I, you asked for khula, and I gave you khula, but they, it, hop, it all happened while they're angry. While they're angry. She spoke while she's angry, he, he responded while, while, while he's angry. And then uh, whenever the anger goes away by, by Asr, they, they, they have remorse. Oh, what are we going to do? Uh, what are we going to do? We have to go, we have to, go to, 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 to the imam to get another contract now. We're going to start over. And he, subhanAllah, what is this playing with the deen of Allah? And then next time they get angry again, we're going to go make a new contract. Every time somebody gets angry, they're going to get divorced and going to get a kula, going to get talaq. And then, and then whenever they're not angry no more, they're going to feel bad. And Don't play with the deen of Allah. The, 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 the talaq and khula, these are, these are commandments, uh, or these are legislations from Allah. And they have uh, their proper places and they have their proper understanding, and, uh, and they can be requested, and they can be necessary in certain situations, and we should not take them as a joke and take the deen of Allah as a game. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا آيَاتِ اللَّهِ هُزُوَا وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا آيَاتِ اللَّهِ هُزُوَا Allah Akbar Don't take the signs of Allah as a, well, as a game. As a game. In the morning they want khura, and then in the evening they want, they want mahar, and, and, and the new contract. This, this, is, this, is, this is not good. This is not good, and then uh, uh, and he, uh, the, he divorced her, and then he, we want to find a way back. And and if this is good, we don't play with the deen of Allah. All of this because of anger. Some people they get angry, and then they act on their anger. They get angry at their child, and they act upon that anger. What happens? That the, they they snatch the child, for example. And 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 this has happened. A, a, a parent will, will 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 snatch the child by the arm and rip his arm out of socket, and he not not intentionally. But because they're angry, what are you doing like this? Or he'll reprimand the child at the time of anger and, and then go beyond the boundaries. Or how many people, even people have died. Why? Because a person is angry. He got angry, he smacked him. He didn't realize that he killed the man. And all of this, any signs that any to act or to speak at the time of anger, and, or these are all examples, any that speaking and acting at the time of anger, one should refrain from that. Just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all three of these affairs. Let him sit down, or let him lay down, or let him be quiet. And because if not, what's going to happen? These things are going to happen. These affairs are going to happen, and in the end, it's it, it's blameworthy. And the person he has left, the, the noble manners, and the one who leaves the noble manners, what does he fall into? The blameworthy manners, the blameworthy manners, and the despicable manners that 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 one would some people will find fault with the one who has them and blame them. And the likes like this. And the likes like this. So the Sheikh, he says, uh, he says, Hafidhullah uh, wa qad jaa fi ba'li riwayat al-hadith. Anna al-sahabi qala fata'ammaltu thalika fawajadtu anna al-ghadaba jima'u al-shar. It has come in some of the narrations of this or some of the wordings of this narration that the companion, the one who was advised to, be, to, to not become angry, he said, I pondered over, I pondered over this affair. And I have realized that anger is the source uh, and uh, uh, is the source of evil, is a source of evil, and, he, and he, so much evil comes from uh, acting and speaking at the time of anger, as I mentioned. And he, how many people divorce has occurred, lives have been taken and lost because what a person becomes angry, especially in these days. Whenever all a person to 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 harm somebody, he just pulled a trigger. Why well, somebody maybe somebody he's in prison for the rest of his life because he got mad. He got mad and he didn't control himself. He killed somebody. He's in prison for the rest of his life. Huh? Or, 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 or he's dead. He got mad and he said the wrong thing to the wrong person. And, and the likes like this. Yeah, then Billah. So this is such great prophetic wisdom and advice and a foundation and pillar for, for noble manners in the deen of Allah. La ta'ulab. Do not become angry. And so to avoid the affairs of becoming angry, that's the first thing. But if a person becomes angry, then he does not act upon that anger, not with speech nor with, nor with action. The Shaykh says, لِأَنَّ إِذَا كَانَ يَنْسَاقُ مَا انْفِعَرَاتِهِ وَمَا غَضَبِهِ سَيُفْضِي بِهِ ذَلِكَ الْوَقُوعِ فِي شُرُورِ فِي شُرُورٍ عَظِيمَةٍ لَا تُحْمَلُ عَقِبَاتُهَا Because the one, and the meaning of that statement of that companion, رضي الله عنه, that uh, anger is the source of evil. 
And that, you know, if a person were to fall behind his desires and to follow his whims and his emotions at the time while he's angry, then this is going to lead him to fall into much evil, tremendous evil, and the affairs that will not be praised in the, in the end, in the outcome that is not praiseworthy. And what led him to that? Anger and acting at the time of anger or speaking at the time of, of anger. He says here, Ar-Ruknu Ar-Rabi, Ar-Ruknu Ar-Rabi, the fourth pillar, Min Arkan Al-Akhlaq, Salamatul Sadri, Salamatul Sadr, that the heart will be safe, and the heart will be sound, and the heart will have ease and contentment, and it will not have an enmity or animosity towards any one of the believers. He says, Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibba li nafsi, that not one of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. He says, فَهَذَا الْحَدِيثُ يُعَدُ عُمْدَةً فِي بَابِ الْأَخْلَاقِ بِأَنْ يَكُونَ صَدْرُ الْمَرْءِ سَلِيمًا لَا يَكُنُ فِيهِ غِلٌ أَوْ حِقْدٌ أَوْ سَخَائِمُ أَوْ ضَغَائِنُ وَنَحْوُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَسْقَامِ الْقُلُوبِ وَأَمْرَاضِهَا وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا he said this narration is considered a pillar and foundation with regards to the affairs of manners. And that is a person's heart. It should be sound and it should be safe. And it should not have any rancor or hatred or animosity towards any one of, uh, of the believers. And it should not have any of these affairs that are considered from the diseases of the heart and from the sicknesses of the heart. And he mentioned the statement of Allah, the meaning of which is, Oh Allah, do not put in our hearts any enmity or animosity towards those who have believed, towards the believers. So Shaykh Abdul Razak, he says, Hafidhahullahu ta'ala, فَسَلَامَةُ الصَّدْرِ رَكِيزَةٌ عَظِيمَةٌ يُقُمُ عَلَيْهَا الْخُلُقُ وَالَّذِي فِي صَدْرِهِ دَوَاخِرُ سَيِّئَةٌ وَبَوَاطِنُ فَاسِدَةٌ لَا, يكونوا, لا يمكنوا أَنْ يَكُونَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْأَخْلَاقِ So having a sound and clean heart, this is a foundation and a great fundamental with regards to the noble manners. And that is that because the person who has his, his bearing and holding animosity and, and hidden uh, corruption in his heart, and his heart is corrupt inwardly because he has an, animosity and envy or hatred or rancor in his heart for some of the believers, he said this person is not possible, he can have good manners. He says, لِأَنَّ فَسَادْ لِبَاطْنِ وَانْحِرَافَهُ يَنْعَكِسُ عَلَى ظَاهِرِهِ Because whenever a person's inside is corrupted, then this has a reflection, and it will end, and whenever the person's inside is de- has deviated, has deviation in it, and meaning in the heart, then this will reflect and show outwardly. And he mentioned the statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةً إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسُدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسُدُ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهِ الْقَلْبِ That verily inside of the body there is a piece of flesh that if it is upright then the whole body will be upright and if it is corrupted then the whole body will be corrupted and verily it is, it is the heart. So the Shaykh he mentioned فِيذَا صَلَحَ قَلْبُ الْمَرْئِ وَطَابَتْ سَرِيرَتُهُ مِنَ الدَّوَاخِرِ السَّيِّئَةِ وَالْبَوَاطِنِ الْفَاسِدَةِ فَإِنَّهُ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَ وَبِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى سَيَتَحَقَّقُ فِيهِ الْخُلُقُ بِأَبْهَا سُوَرِهِ وَأَجْمَلِ حُولَدِهِ He says so that if a person's heart is rectified and his inward affair is good and pure and he's free from having these... Uh, inward ills and uh, a corrupt uh, and he conscious and inside of his heart is corrupted if he's free from that then ta'ala, the good manners will be actualized and realized for him in the best form and the most beautiful manner so the shaykh he mentions here in adaba fi shariati lahu makanatuhu al aliya wal manzilatuhu ar rafia the very manners and etiquettes inside the legislation of Allah Azza wa Jalla, it has a, a lofty status and it has a very high rank. فَإِذَا وُفِّقَ الْمُسْلِمُ إِلَى مَعْرِفَةِ آدَابَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَأَخْلَاقِهِ الْعَظِيمَةِ وَاسْتَعَانَ بِاللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى عَلَى تَحْقِيقِهَا نَالَ خَيْرًا عَظِيمًا وَفَضْلًا عَمِيمًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ So if a Muslim is given success to understand and comprehend and have knowledge of the Islamic manners and the tremendous and good conduct of al-islam and at the same time he seeks the aid and the help of allah Azawajal to perform that and comply to that and actualize those manners then he will obtain a tremendous amount of good and a great all-encompassing virtue and a reward in this life and in the hereafter 
So he says, فَمَا أَحْوَجَ الْمُسْلِمْ إِلَى دِرَاسَةِ أَخْلَاقِ الْإِسْلَامِ الرَّفِيَّ وَأَدَابِهِ الْكَامِلَةِ So I, the, the Muslim is in great need. Great need. The Muslim is in great need to study the Islamic manners, the lofty and high Islamic manners, and the complete and correct Islamic conduct and uh, etiquettes. مع تصحيح النية في هذا المقام along with purifying the intention any in this affair إذ النية قد يشوبها ما يشوبها من أغراض وأمور تخل بها because the intention could become uh, defected or become effective uh, excuse me become affected and it could have blemishes that would corrupt it by having desires and having goals and aims that could uh, weaken and corrupt the intention. And if the niyyah is corrected, then there will be blessing in the actions and the shaykh, he mentions more uh, benefits and affairs with regards to this issue. But that which we wanted to discuss is finished uh, at this point. And that is that these manners, they're very important for a believer to learn them. The proper and Islamic manners, Al-Adab al sharia that has come from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and clarified in the Quran and in the Sunnah and in the life and the biography of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to learn that and to know that and then to strive, seeking Allah's aid and help to comply to that and to apply that and to be upon that way and to live upon the proper conduct and manners and etiquettes in all aspects of life, praising and thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for having got, been, been guided uh, to this way and guided to this knowledge, to this knowledge and to these matters. And then likewise, when one is given success to comply to them, even greater uh, responsibility to show thanks to Allah Azza wa Jalla, to praise Him and to thank Him. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that which we have learned from these matters uh, and that which we have learned from the affairs of our deen are for us and not against us and to allow us to benefit from that which we study together and to apply that in our lives and in our homes and our families and, and with our children and our likes like this and make the knowledge that we learn beneficial for us and uh, make us lights uh, of goodness for our community and insha'Allah in our next class on Laylat al which is Sunday night we begin Umdat al Hakam, as we have mentioned previously, and uh, we begin where we have left off in that work with the chapter of As Salat. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.